when you meditate, you're both the teacher and the student at the same time. In other words, you're the student who's learning how to meditate. That's one part of the mind. And the other part of the mind is the teacher, keeping watch over the student to make sure that it's doing what it's supposed to do. What you're supposed to be doing right now is staying with the breath. Try to notice which part of the body the breath is most obvious. In other words, the sensation that tells you that now the breath is coming in, now the breath is going out. You'll have those sensations in lots of different parts of the body. Just try to choose one where it seems most obvious, where it seems most natural to stay focused. Could be the tip of the nose, the middle of the chest, the abdomen. Any part of the body where you have a clear sensation that now the breath is coming in, now the breath is going out. And allow that area to stay relaxed all the way through the in-breath, all the way through the out, and all the way through the spaces in between. And you find pretty quickly that the mind wanders off to something else. So you've got to bring it back. That's the teacher part. The teacher that says, okay, now you've got to come back. And there are times when you have to be a stern teacher, and other times where you have to be a good-hearted teacher. When I first went to grade school, it was a little two-room school, 60 kids all together. One teacher had grades one through three, the other one had four through eight. And the first grade teacher, she was the taskmaster. She had a saying, if you work when you should work, then you will play when you should play. But if you do not work when you should work, you shall not play when you should play. And she said it in that tone of voice. It made you think it came from the Bible. During recess, she would sit up in the window. She was up on a second story. Or it seemed like a second story when I was a little kid. I went back recently and it wasn't all that far off the ground, but it seemed way up there. And if anybody misbehaved out on the playground, she, the window would rise up and you'd see her arm pointing out the window straight at you. And you had to go in and sit down because you couldn't play anymore. The other teacher, Mrs. Lane, was an entirely different sort of person. Her hair was kind of frizzy and she liked to smoke. So she'd announce the, the work for the day and then go down to the ladies' room and have a smoke. My older brother had her. I never got to have her. By the time I got to the fourth grade, they had changed teachers. But my brother tells a story when he first went into the fourth grade. Mrs. Lane went down to the, the ladies' room. Every kid in the room was just started running around playing. And then at one point, most of the other kids picked up the signal. Mrs. Lane was coming up the stairs. So they all got back into the seats, except for my brother, who was kind of excitable. He was still running around when she came into the room. So of course he had to stay after, after class that day. And basically what she told him was, Galen, you're going to you have to learn how to be sneaky. Listen for when I'm coming up the stairs. You can imagine of the two teachers who we all loved the most. But we also learned an awful lot from the strict one. You have to have the same attitude when you're meditating. Sometimes you've got to be kind and gentle with the mind. When you find it wandering off, you say, OK, come on back. And other times you have to be more strict. You can't just keep letting it wander around. And this is the role of mindfulness. Trying to keep the breath in mind, keep reminding you to stay here with the breath. And as soon as you catch yourself wandering off, that's the function of alertness. In other words, watching what's actually going on. One, watching what's going on with the breath. And then two, watching what's going on with the mind. Are you staying focused with the breath?
If not, come right back. So mindfulness and alertness work together, and it's ardency is a quality of mind that keeps them all together. The mindfulness and the alertness and the breath. Trying to do it in a skillful way. In other words, when you're getting frustrated, those are the times for, for Mrs. Lane. Say, okay. Learns how to cajole you back into doing what you know should be doing. And when the mind is just ornery, that's when you have to be more like my first grade teacher, whose name was Mrs. de Graff, by the way. Not related. That's when he did the stern teacher. So, okay, you got to get back right now. No fooling around. When you're with the breath, then it's more a matter of figuring out exactly what needs to be done. What's the most comfortable way of breathing right now? Try experimenting with a breath. Try some long, deep in and out breaths. See how they feel. And then try some shorter breathing. See how that feels. Fast, slow, gentle, heavy. Experiment with a breath for a while to see what the mind likes, what feels physically most comfortable, what helps to keep that spot that you've chosen open, comfortable, easeful. Sometimes you don't have to think too much about experimenting. Just say, maintain that spot that you've chosen, wide open and relaxed. And you find that the breath will adjust itself in a way that keeps that spot open and relaxed, with a sense of fullness and ease. Times like that, the teacher can fall into the background, or actually do, instead of being the, just the disciplinarian, do the actual teaching, suggesting ideas, exploring things, learning new things. There's a lot to learn about the breath. Traditionally, they talk about the body of ha as having four elements. Now, they're not talking about the chemical elements, they're talking more about properties. Breath is sense of motion in the body. The water element is the liquid sense sensations, the cool sensations. The fire element is the warm sensations. The earth element is the solid sensations. This is basically how you feel the body from within. So right now we're working with the breath, the wind. And they say that all of these properties fill the whole body. In some parts of the body they're more apparent, but the potential for any of them is present in every part of the body. So you might want to think of the whole body as breath, the whole body as energy. Energy can't be bottled up. If you feel there's a sensation of constriction or being bottled up in some part of the body, okay, you're not with the breath, you're with something else. So try to get a sense of how that particular body can be perceived as energy that flows with no restrictions. You might want to make a survey of the whole body before you settle down. Notice when you breathe in where there's a sense of it's being the energy being bottled up or stuffed into a part of the body or constricted and uncomfortable in whatever with the way. And think of it flowing around, whatever the obstacle may be. And there's more of a sense of fluidity in the body. Easy motion. And you find that it's more comfortable just sitting here with the body when you see it in that light. You've got these different potentials here for solid feelings or liquid feelings or energy feelings or warm feelings. And sometimes all you need to do is make the mental note that it's possible for these feelings to be in any part of the body, wherever they're needed. 
and it helps to dissolve a lot of the tension. It tends to build up areas of the body that you tend to hold in or tend to be. If there's a pain in some type, part of the body, maybe you've tensed up around the pain. Well, try to relax around it and see what happens. And this way you get more and more in touch with how you're directly experiencing the body, and also gaining a sense that you don't have to just sit here with whatever's there. You can change things in the body simply through the power of thought. Notice sensations that you didn't notice before. Connect things in a way you didn't connect them before. When you're doing this, the student and the teacher working together, the disciplinarian falls into the background. Because concentration that's kept going simply through force of will is not very stable, not very lasting. Concentration that comes from being interested in seeing what's actually going on, learning to explore, experiment, learn new things. That kind of concentration has a good solid basis. So there's a lot to explore here in your sense of the body, seeing how the energy flows down the nerves, through the blood vessels, in the different parts of the body. So once you have a sense of one spot in the body that seems at ease, okay, see if you can spread that sense of being at ease to the rest of the body as well. This is called concentration fostered by your powers of discernment, your willingness to explore and learn new things. So the breathing is not mechanical, and the mind doesn't feel strapped down. You're not trying to put yourself into a trance, so don't force the breath too much. You want the breath to be easy and flowing, and you're just simply here take, keeping tabs on it. Observing, noticing connections. What feels good, what doesn't feel good. Because a lot of the issue in concentration is how you can make it pleasant. It has to be to your liking. And at this point, the role of the teacher, and at least the outside teacher, is simply to point out to you that there are more possibilities than you may have thought of in how you can relate to the body, how you conceive, can conceive the different sensations in the body. And from that point on, it's up to your inner teacher and student to point things out to each other, to ask questions, to look for answers, or how you can settle down and be at ease in the present moment. We were in a bookstore recently and saw a book. It was a, supposed to be a humorous book. And it mentioned the different religions in America. And Buddhism was the go figure religion. You wrap yourself in a cloth, in a robe, sit under a tree, and be aware, they said. Well, there's a lot to be aware of. There's a lot to explore right here. One of our main problems in our culture is we don't look inside enough. We don't explore inside enough. So here's a chance for a whole hour. Sit here with your eyes closed and be aware. But ask questions. Look for answers. First, how you can stay here with a sense of ease, and then see what there is to learn here. First about the body, and as you learn about the body, you find it goes more and more into the mind. And a lot of it comes from simply feeling your way, experimenting. The ideal way to learn. <laughs>